Okay. Okay, Simon Bull. Hey, Simon, how are you? You're in the car. Welcome. We're so glad yeah. you're here. We oh, we're it's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Thanks for in the middle of your busy day stopping by to really let us in on the secret of the making of a prophetic artist, what you've done in your life. We're just so excited. Now you have also been involved in seeing so many people being really uh, inspired by your art on Instagram and on different Facebook, as well as having two major galleries in Carmel and in the Napa Valley in St. Helena. And part of, part of our heart today is to really help people to understand where they are in their journey of becoming a prophetic artist and also what can they do to grow in. So Simon, share a little bit about, uh, I would love to hear about like what, because we're doing a prophetic art mastery workshop this weekend on Saturday, but you're going to be speaking. What is it that you want people to grab a hold of? Those that want to create art, those that want to go after uh, painting in God's presence, what do you feel like God is saying and, and what do you want to see happen during this, this uh, workshop? Well, all I can do, Teresa, is like share my story. You know, um, I don't have any specific outcomes in mind other than that, uh, you know, perhaps somebody might be inspired, you know, uh, and that may have a beneficial effect, you know, on their you know, art journey or their personal spiritual journey. Yeah, I mean, we all influence each other and that's the beauty of art. It can impact and influence others. I, I love that. Uh, share about your first epiphany when you first felt like you were called uh, to be an artist. I know that in your journey in England, in the UK, you were really wondering about if you should go into the ministry, which you kind of were at that time, or if you should pursue art. And what was the, what was the meeting place of when you found out, <laughs> hey, I feel like I feel like I'm supposed to start. I'm supposed to start back on my art journey. Well, I, you know, I I knew I, I had a very strong sort of a sense when I was a teenager that I that I wanted to be and could be an artist, and um, you know I started selling my work when I was in high school, or before, and um, so I set out on a kind of a career path, but also as I. As I, um, you know, became a Christian and, you know, began following God. You know, I was uh, going to a church that put a lot of emphasis on mission and preaching and things like that. So the idea would be that, um, sorry, I'm about to sneeze here, for allergies. Um, but if you were like a real Christian, you know, you, um, you know, you'd be a preacher. You know, like the, the right. very best Christians like, did Christian stuff, you know, uh, but art was rather a sort of uh, something of a self-indulgent kind of a thing, you know. Yeah. Um, um, like who needs art or whatever, you know. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I, but I, I spent 15 years as a professional artist um doing really nice painting you know really decent paintings that sort of that i could show to people and say this is a really nice painting it's a nice picture of a sheep because it looks like a sheep you know it's a really nice landscape it's, it looks like the right landscape it's accurate and it's well done and it's obviously i'm obviously a great artist a good artist is i paint a picture of Teresa deadman that looks like Teresa deadman right <laughs> surely yeah um but in the in the mid nineties, I had sort of like a like a personal crisis of some kind or whatever. I was actually pastoring a church in England at that time, and uh, I, you know, I was in my kitchen one day, and I felt God speak to me, not in an audible voice, of course, but just in my heart. He said, "Simon, like, what are you doing?" And I was like, "Well, you know, I'm." pastoring a church and he said well why and I said well because um because I wanted to see the kingdom of God expand and that's like what good Christian boys do you know <laughs> it's like and then he said to me like well I thought I made you an artist I said well yeah yeah that's true he said so why aren't you painting I'm like well um 
then I just thought, well, why am I not focusing on that? And I, I, I just said, well, so I said to the Lord, well, because you don't love me enough to let me do what I want to do, because what I really want to do is paint. But I don't think that I should because I, I don't feel that, you know, I just don't feel the freedom because, like, I'm not sure whether I'd be pleasing you, you know, or doing the right thing. I'd be doing my own thing. And, uh, you know, at that point, I sort of realized that uh, God was really encouraging me to um, f understand what the main calling of my life was and to focus on it. You know, so I uh, I resigned at the church and uh, I uh, focused on my art career. And um, then I. You know, I went from there to being the best-selling artist in the UK within a couple of years and uh, then got picked up by a big American distributor and became a top-selling artist over here and then, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, God showed me that he would use me more through my art than he would, you know, as a pastor in a local town. He'd take me more globally, which is what happened. Yeah. Oh my gosh, huge. It's that, that's huge. And I love, I mean, there's something about art that is so transformative for people. I'll, I'll never forget one friend that you met that was an artist at Bethel when you came and spoke and did the intensive. And she brought in some of the artwork that she had collected from the UK. And she goes, I was just drawn to Simon's art because it made me joyful and it made me expressive of who I was and and I love that about your art your art is so expressive it's it moves us and there's just something about when you create that moves people and and I I just love that I love to see the power of how art can be a transformative uh, I'd say like way of people understanding uh, the beauty of God in even a way where they're not even Christian and they, they're just loving it. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, but a lot of you might not be aware of, of Simon and his adventures and what he's doing. And so we wanted to share with you a couple of videos about that. So Simon, share a little bit about your heart. Why, why is it so important for you to bring joy to people through your art and where does that come from? So go ahead and I'll, I'll pull up some videos. Go ahead. Well, when I was <clears throat> when I was a kid, you know, it was, I, I have to put this in simple terms to stop, make it sound too philosophical or whatever. But basically, you know, when I would go out as a kid um, and go out into the woods and pick some flowers and bring them back and put them on the kitchen table for my mother to enjoy, you know, that would make her happy. Right. And so as an artist that's really all i'm doing you know but i just do it for the world you know it's basically the concept is go out into nature go out into the realm of philosophy or thinking or observation of the world around you of sensing god's wandering creation and uh find really cool things that are exciting and make a painting kind of inspired by them and show it to other people i mean really just to show and tell that's all i mean that's all art is really just show and tell it, it really is a show and tell. And, and I love that. And that's, that's kind of your desire is to do that. And now you're doing reels, which are, we'll talk about in a moment, but I'm just going to share my screen. We're going to go to Simon's uh, Facebook account and we're going to watch this video right here. And to get to full screen, I'm going to do that right now. So Simon, share about this one, this one that you're doing right well, that, here. That was one that went wrong, so I cut it up into small sections and sold the sections as canvas fragments. <laughs> Instead of one artwork that went wrong, I made, I think, about 40 different little artworks out of it. Isn't that crazy? You guys I Go ahead. Yeah, I, was using, I was using the wrong kind of foundation. They call it a pillow, which is basically like a uh, foundational layer, uh, but it was an inconsistent paint compared to the paint on top so it, it separated and didn't really work so i just cut it up 
So this is called like what to do if a painting has gone wrong and how you can create art. And then you added more stuff to it. You added your signature to it. This is so yeah, great. I, just, yeah. Yeah. I love that one. Um, let's go into this one right here. So share about this one. Well, let me see what it is first. No idea what it is. Looks like some kind of a tree. <laughs> That's like a blossom tree of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tree, like a blossom tree. So I start, I always start with the background, obviously the gray, the gray backgrounds or the black backgrounds or a white or cream or whatever color of background. Um, that's to me is the stage. And then you bring on to the stage, you bring kind of uh, maybe some props with supporting action. And then you bring on the main, the main actor onto the stage and dress him up, whatever, and uh, let him tell his story. And this one yeah. happens to be a blossom, a blossom tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. It's it's like you you began this journey of really going into performance art when you were on the cruise ships, right? Isn't that is that where it started as far as moving into not just being one where you showed your art in galleries, but it was a different style that you created based upon an audience that was looking for um, to be moved, correct? And so talk about that journey and how you got started in that. Cause that just is, this just wows me every time you share this. Well, I started, um, I started doing, I, I was working with, uh, I was represented by uh, a large art gallery that did shows on cruise ships uh, and uh, hotels around the country. And initially when I first started doing that many years ago, um, you know, I thought it would be good to, uh, you know, do some live painting just from a kind of marketing perspective or whatever, because, um, you know, I had to compete with the other artists, have something that stood out. But then that became gradually like I, I, that became a thing. And I, and I ended up becoming basically kind of a performance artist as well as an artist. And ultimately then on Instagram, and Facebook, um, you know, I do these, what you might describe as process videos, art process videos, but I made a change uh, psychologically from making videos of me painting that were about, that were more promotional, like sh me maybe talking or showing my process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, I stopped doing that a couple of years ago and I started doing, um, I made short 20 second videos that were actually, they were the art. You know, so that mm -hmm. the video was now the art. So not not. I mean, the painting, the finished painting, also is the art. But the video of, the video that's made of the process, is also another artwork, an independent artwork, which has the power to move, uh, either for good or bad, the audience. You know. And that and that created, within, the the way that the way that you process your art, it created a whole new audience. Uh -huh. Like you have, I mean, how many hits are you getting in the Middle East? I mean, so there's people that aren't in St. Helena or in Carmel, but that are getting a taste of, of how art can move us to um, by these 20 second reels. So, so share about how did that happen? And, and why is that such a part of your life now? Well, like I say, a lot of times I think when people use social media for promotional purposes or they they um, try and sell something or they're trying to create something to sell or they're trying to make a living or whatever. And um, the customer has no concern whatsoever about you, whether you're trying to make a living or trying to help you. They're only concerned about themselves. And um, so you you have to just a second. Let me just turn my engine back on. Um, you have to, uh, you know, I, st I started doing videos that were for the people, you know, Hang on. sorry about the background noise. Um, I, I started making entertaining videos. And so you know, the, my videos all have to conform to one of three particular criteria, which they have to entertain, educate and inspire. You know? So, so it's all like a freebie, you know, you are just doing it to give away and you put it out there. You don't, you're not trying to make money out of it um you just do it and um you know it's like a good video to watch so we've had like 
uh, over a you know well over a billion views you know we've had some videos of me painting that have had like 190 million views now um which is quite, quite a lot of views just short of 200 million um so yeah but we you know it's been a very interesting journey yeah yeah it's it's kind of like the world is coming to you uh, we, we talked about that earlier how I mean, on the one hand, when you were doing it on the boat and you were like doing stuff for cruise ships, et cetera, there was a very small audience, but now God's really given you the world. But like you said, to entertain, to inspire, to, in a sense, educate that that's, it, it's like, this is your, I would say your, um, your classroom in a sense is what, what's happening inside of you and how you're moving and and how you're partnering now how does how does god fit into all of this because we have obviously we're we're really wanting to inspire people to not just stay within the confines of doing a picture of jesus or doing stuff within a church realm but we want to inspire people that art can inspire and it can transform other types of of places and situations and people groups so so share about that how do you partner with with God in your approach when you when you create well so I I um the best way to look at this is like I, I don't I don't ever invite God into my process you know I I I find that as a Christian I find myself being drawn into his process you know I I want to um come on uh, you know, I, I I find that the the the, uh, the process of being aware of the world around me, and then following the promptings of God in my thoughts about how to choose a particular thing over another, and mm -hmm. then to start painting maybe the way the paint flows or the colors come, you know, it's sort of like I I, I um. You know, I sort of say to people that in a lot of my paintings, I start them and God finishes them sort of thing. You know, it's like um, mm. you, I just sort of get in like a zone and just I just I don't overthink it. You can't. You see, the thing is, the process of painting and when we talk about art in the context of my work, we're talking about either video or painting. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't say, right, I'm going to paint a picture which is going to have a certain message to it like a sermon or a book or whatever it's not right. like that you know you you're dealing you're you're, you're um your commodity is like feelings or hunches or sort of suggestions or things like that you know um and and so you you, you, there's no such thing as like in a way like christian art or prophetic art like all art is prophetic that like every single painting ever painted is prophetic when the when the caveman put his hand on the roof of a cave in south of france and made a handprint how prophetic is that like you know gazillion years ago still speaking to us saying that i was here you know and i think that um that for me like christian art particularly is it's not about doing art like you say about being a picture of jesus or whatever it's doing art from a christian heart you know mm -hmm. that yeah. if you if you if you are inspired by god and you're following god and you're trusting god and believing in jesus and living the life he wants you to do everything flows out like jesus said you know, out of your heart will flow like live, rivers of living water yeah you know so you don't sort of like think like i don't look at like two of my paintings and think that which is the more christian one you know <laughs> like they're all right, right they're all they're all they're all like god they're all infused with the spirit of god and um the beauty of it is is that they go out into the world and people feel the spirit behind it see i don't paint for christians and i don't paint for non-christians you know i can paint for people yes come on yeah and and i, and I uh I, I I don't try to evangelize in that sense because I I just like presume that everybody's a Christian, right? But what I mean by that is that I speak to people as if they agree with me. Hmm. Right. Right. Uh, meaning that uh, 
I speak about universal truths of life, which is truly the gospel. Uh, but I do it in a way which is non-partisan, which is through art, which is like, if I want to show people, you know, uh, the glory of God, maybe I'll paint a picture which has God's colors in it, you know, which is every color there is, you know, and every tone there is. I mean, right? and so that's why, that's why Instagram and, and Facebook have been so awesome for me because, you know, only 23% of my audience is in the U.S. You know, my biggest audience outside the U.S. is in Iran, for example. Tehran is my most popular city, as is Cairo and also Lagos in Nigeria. I have a huge following there. And then in Chile, South America, a lot of people in Brazil, all around the world, um, people are watching these videos for some reason uh, because they, I don't really talk in them. I just, I just pour colors, you know, I just drip colors. I just paint pictures and uh, you know, people get touched. I mean, this is very interesting to me how I get a lot of love, got a wonderful comments, but I also get probably mm -hmm. on the really viral videos. It's that like 90, 90% hate, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, so hate is, yeah, yeah. Hate, hate is a message. Hate is a, a way of them expressing. It's like there's there's something that happens when we allow our art to speak to a broad audience. We have to we have to look at that and like you talked about, like realize like when you're doing this this these wonderful reels and you're you're talking about the beauty of how you're designing something and. They're watching the patterns take shape and, and things like that. They're actually um, starting to understand their own place in life. It's funny how parables, how Jesus spoke in parables so that people could identify with where they were at in that parable. And some people like they need to express every kind of emotion, which we need to allow them to do. It's it's really it's really inspiring. I, I'm going to show them one of uh, <laughs> one of the other videos that you have that you did and i love this one let me just pull this one up i think this is let's see right here and i'm gonna pull this one up so this is performance art that simon did and uh we're gonna go ahead and for full screen, I go to. Just you click sure. on the video first, and then you get All the right. full screen. Gotcha. Maybe it's the one above that, is it? Let's just see. I can it's do right. the. I can do the other one too. Let me stop sharing. And they're going to be pulled up. Now that was a piece that you did, right? That again. Well, I'm missing. You got various links there. I can't see which ones are going to be. So. Okay. Did you guys see no, that? On, have you clicked? Have you, uh, did you click on that one? It says pour on black. Let me just look here and do that again. Share screen. The middle one, the middle one, the middle one. Black, this one or yeah, this? Yeah, this click one? On that. yeah, click on that one. Yeah, I thought that was the same one. That's yeah, the one. Why? I don't know why it's not coming up. Try, try the one above it. See what happens there. Okay. Let's try that one. The one above it oh. is the YouTube one, and then for the love of dance, white canvas. You want that one? Let's look at no, that. The, the, not that one. For some okay. reason, the links are not working while you're on the Zoom. I don't know why, but okay, it's fine. But where would they find out more about your stuff then, if they wanted to look at it themselves? Oh, they just follow me on Instagram, Simon Bull Art. Okay, that's perfect. One word. Um, okay. I can tell. I can tell you about that video instead of you sharing it. Yeah, and basically. Yeah. Um, I did a performance with like the Carmel Ballet Company and um, they wanted to incorporate 
you know the dancers in with the art somehow and I knew that would make a tremendous mess so I <laughs> figured out that if I, if I lay the dancers on a large canvas and poured paint from the, over them with my sort of custom paint pouring tray that when I pulled them off the floor you know it would sort of uh, make a there would be remaining of a silhouette so I wanted to tell the story of uh, a woman uh, at the break of the day sort of thing seeing her dream reaching for her dream but her dream was like kind of fading or whatever uh, and as the paint came over her it was like bright stripes and as it, as it went over the guy on the right like the, this paint became kind of droplets or whatever so it was pretty dramatic and um, we got 30 million views on Facebook on it but uh, in a lot of the um, it was interesting because you listen to the comments and and I think that what I'm about to say is very true of our life today and and that is that we as people we get very bogged down in the process so uh, most of the comments the negative comments and a variation of that video is the one that said it's had 190,000 views 190 million views online like it's been picked up by different people and shared um, that people are like enraged by the process you know um and then people break out into arguments about what is and what isn't art and so on and so forth. But I went on once and explained that, look, you know, you're, you're all arguing about the process because you don't understand it or you don't like it or you don't think it's spent enough time. You know, people say, well, you know, you've not really studied this or you've not painted it neatly. It's just poured, whatever. And people would just like go on and on like that. But I said, well, the point is that I'm creating a work of art that when you see it at the end, there's the shadow of this woman reaching out for her dream. And it's about a certain story, okay? And so often we find that we approach life in that negative way. Like I'm studying Mark's gospel at the moment and it was the same problem then that Jesus yeah. came into the yeah. world to save sinners, right? Yeah. But people would be saying all the time things like, well, you can't be the son of God because like God doesn't have a son. All right. Okay. You can't heal anybody on the Sabbath day. You're doing it all wrong. Okay. Um, you can't take your disciples to the cornfield on the Sabbath and they can't eat and they can't do this and they can't do that. And they can't do the other. And so people were like very legalistically, they, they, they'd forgotten that the purpose of life is Uh oh, I think we just lost Simon. Come back, Simon. <laughs> the purpose of life is to, oh my gosh, thanks you guys too for everybody chiming in. I love this. There's so many people out there that are chiming in, Simon, about your, your process art, about what God is doing, about the power behind what can happen. If you want more of Simon, come to the intent, come to the workshop. It's this Saturday. You can go to TeresaDedman.com. One of you guys just put that in the link, TeresaDedman.com to learn more because we really want to see you thrive and grow. This is the hour for us to go after the presence of God through art in so many different ways. If you want to hear more of Simon, my story about people who are starting to do things in the marketplace creatively, uh, people that are doing all different, there he is. He's back. <laughs> hey, Simon. That's okay. You're just muted still. So unmute. You you were right at the point where you're saying, and the purpose of art is, and then we go, oh my gosh, this is the clincher. <laughs> oh, you're still muted, Simon. You're still muted. We just can't hear you yet. So yeah, the, the, uh, my phone got overheated. Sorry about that. So the... um. The purpose of life, you know, is, is to find the purpose of being a human is to find the meaning in life and to, to find God's plan and purpose for our life and and celebrate and love it and enjoy every day. We all as people get bogged down in the process. We're like, well, that person's doing it wrong or they can't do it right or they're cheating or this is not appropriate or and before we know what's happening, we've stopped actually living our life and we've started like 
being schoolmasters, trying to correct everybody else, and also trying to show everybody else how good we are and how how conformed we are, so that we can not get you know rejected in any way. And so, I, you know, I find that what I've learned from the the, the worldwide comment uh, thread is that the hearts of the 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 the, 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 uh, the thoughts of many hearts are laid bare. You know. Yeah. And yeah. and um, I I think that young artists are afraid of upsetting anybody or getting rejection, and so they stifle their creativity. Because what yeah. I found is that the more people you upset, the better. <laughs> Come on, yes. Oh my gosh, please like listen to this. This is gold, everybody. I mean, this is really what we're trying to do at this uh, workshop coming up is you'll hear about people that are upsetting the barrel, that are going after it, that are seeing people get transformed, healed and touched and doing crazy things. Uh, because if you don't try something new and if you don't try something from what you feel led to do, then there's a part of of the whole like loving loving God and knowing your purpose that will not be discovered. I mean, I think of you, Simon, like, unless you would have had the courage to talk to God and to say, well, yeah, I really love doing art. Well, then what are you doing? Like, why, why are you? And, and why do you think like that, that your art is not a vehicle for sharing a message of hope? I mean, and that's, I think the the issue is like we've conformed to the belief system that everybody has to like what we do. Everybody has to like what we create or else we've missed it. And that's just not true. We're, we're supposed to be who we are and let the chips fall where they, where they be. And I think that's, that's where you, yeah. that's where you've taken this world of, of Instagram and of Facebook and it, may we all follow that this is this is a journey of not conforming to what anybody wants or says but going after what you alone are called to create and to discover i think i think the other thing simon that i believe that i love about you and being at your you know your studio seeing your gallery so many times is the fact that you are a risk taker you want to try new ways of creating you want to please look at his artwork on uh, bullart.com because, and go to his Instagram, because that's all part of what it means to be a seeker of God is to figure out his new message, figure out how to wrap it and how to paint it and how to create it. Um, just, I, I want you just to like in, share like three tips that you would give somebody who wants to grow in learning how to create and learning how to go after their calling. Go ahead and give them three steps. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to learn cool techniques, obviously just go to YouTube. I mean, that's great, isn't it? Learn anything you want on YouTube practically. But uh, in reality, um, what I would highly recommend for anybody, whatever stage they're at, is give, to, give what you're doing today like your best shot and see where it takes you you know you can't suddenly like be that guy with like you know hundreds of millions of views or whatever maybe you'll get 10 more views than you got last week or maybe you'll sell a picture but i mean what i started doing was when i was a kid like i would paint pictures of things that i really enjoyed doing and then the teachers at my school started offering me money for them you know i'm like oh this sounds interesting maybe we've got a business here I spent kind of the rest of my life doing that. But I think I would say, I would just remind people that at the end of the day, it's just a show and tell. And it may or may not be commercially viable for you. But if you're excited to see something in the world and talk about it, and, and, and other people are excited to listen, whether they say this is rubbish or they say this is great, that if they say it's terrible, that means that there's something in it that provokes them. And so maybe there's more in it than you think. It's probably an opportunity to keep doing more if they say it's really, really bad. Um, and uh, just keep going. And, and I think the thing is, don't do it out of any sense of duty. Do it because you're excited. You know, I mean, you know, 
I think true artists do it because they have to. I mean, people come up to me and say, well, what advice would you give my daughter? She wants to be an artist. She's sold a picture. I say, well, that's really great. Now sell one every day for the rest of your life, you know. Um, come on. And, uh, you know, yeah. it's not that it's not actually like that that easy you know like just to go and be an artist in that sense yeah. but um you know, the, the the but at the same time um that's not what it's about you know it, it's um mm. if you can sing a song and others enjoy listening to it then maybe sing it again you know yeah i think that's right i think one of the things that you just shared about that's so great is what effect does your art, what effect does your music, what effect does your dance, what effect does your writing have upon the audience? And then I love what you said is then make one for the rest of your life. It's that constant. Um, I think God's enticing us into a place where we we have to see something new we have to see what what's happening next and so uh so that's this this is part of the journey of making the making of an artist the making of a person who's prophesying like you said is prof everybody is prophesying through whatever they're creating whether it's for good or for bad they're they're all wanting to share their stories but the thing i love about what you're talking about is is you 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 give people the process of creating, but then you leave the rest to God. You follow the paint, you follow the storyline, you follow God in this adventure of what what is next, what can we do? And so I, I want you to impart that, Simon. I I know that I wish that people could just see what what your your heart is in your in your journey of what you do in your gallery and and in your studio and how much life it creates because it's so it's so palpable to me because i feel like it's such a message of us learning about the adventures of creating it's just such a powerful message that you have but and now this thing with like what you're doing with instagram with facebook with these reels it's like guys there's always more i'm sure next year <laughs> when i talk to Simon and then we talk about okay what's next he's going to go oh well Teresa now it's like that's the adventure that God always wants yeah. more and so exactly that, I mean yeah. it's like a journey you know wherever you're going on a journey you know you go past a certain place and then you go to the next town and then you take a country road then you get on the freeway you know every section of the journey has a meaning at the time you're on it because it's getting you towards your ultimate destination and same with me. People say, well, you know, you used to do farm animals and English landscapes. Then you started doing flowers. We knew you as the, you know, first of all, people would know me like in the 80s as the guy that did, you know, farm animals, right? Yeah. Then in the 90s, they knew me as the guy that did like florals or whatever. And then now I'm doing like a lot of abstract stuff, pouring paint, like a paint pouring kind of a thing. And they're like, well, yeah we saw you like when you did this other thing like you know what why are you doing this now and like but then you're gaining a new audience all the time you know uh and you every you you see the thing is you have to speak into the you speak with the inspiration of the day you know yeah um you speak into the spirit of the age with the spirit of god uh based on what god is saying now like why so in the old testament people would say you know, and they would draw near and say, like, is there a word from the Lord, right? Yeah. Well, yes, yeah. actually, there is. Like, And it, <laughs> it wasn't yesterday's word. Like, it's today's word, right? Yeah. And that may be, like, from a painter's perspective, that just may be a bunch of colorful stripes being poured down a canvas. Or it, or it could be, uh, yes. it could be yeah. an actual painting of a landscape or a bird or a thing. It may or may not be. But the point is that it's now. Like, you know, when we... What, when people will, all the people that are watching today, Teresa, if they painted a picture today, right? Yeah. They painted one picture right now, okay? And that picture was looked at in 200 years' time. Right. Okay? Every single one of those pictures would tell those people in the future something very, very strong about today and the world in which we live. They wouldn't necessarily know about the individual artist, but you'd see the style and the medium 
and the subject and the color and the general thing and they say that is so 2023 i cannot believe it right um, and because we can't really help creating outside of the world in which we live but we speak today into the future that is what is prophetic because then you know we say that i was here you know god was here uh, the world was like this and so people in the future can be made to feel blessed and secure when they look back and see in the old men and women of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit and this encourages us today so as an artist you know you may be speaking to an audience in a thousand years time I think I think that's exactly right. I think that um, art outlives us. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's why, I mean, Paris is one of the most celebrated and visited uh, places in the world because of all that Monet and other of the Impressionists built. I mean, it's just true. It's just like, that's why you, you see the statue of David. There's art is meant to move, but not just for that era, but it's meant to move us to what were they thinking about in that day? What was happening in that day? And so mm. guys, I don't know about you, but I'm inspired. If you want to learn more again, go to the, go to TeresaDebman.com and that's going to be in the chat and go to the prophetic art mastery workshop, sign up to hear more from Simon, myself and others that are crazy enough to create things that that are going to shift culture why not i mean why not you so get inspired that's right. why not and yeah i mean that's the whole thing is like guys it's it's like this world is passing by but you take take control of the reins of what you feel called to like what's happened to simon if simon would have said oh well i'm just called because i'm a, a christian to to go within the church and be a minister we would not be talking right now. <laughs> you know, right, he would not be true. having so many followers on Instagram and Facebook. It's like, guys, follow your heart. Don't let anything stop you. Um, Simon, I would love for you to pray and just to impart to those that are listening now. All right, Father, I just want to thank you for all the folks on this call right now. They're here for a reason. And I'm just uh, a guy who's done this most of my, nearly, well, actually all my adult life. And mm. um, all I have is my experience to share. But each one of us has a unique calling from you and an opportunity to bless this world with the love of God. And I pray for each one that they would be encouraged to be brave, to be confident, to put it out there and to overcome any worries about what other people may think of them while they're going through the learning curve of doing something that may be not very good uh, because you have to do things that are not very good in order to get to things that are better. I pray you'll give them courage and confidence. And also, Lord, I pray that when they look with their eyes at the world around them and that they listen with the ears of their spirit, Lord, that they would hear your whisper and prompting and that when they pour their heart into their art, that you would speak through it in unimaginable ways to unimaginable people in unimaginable time zones or eras. Lord, that maybe like the man that put his hand on the roof of a cave thousands of years ago and is still speaking, I pray that there would be those on this call today that may do something that in many years to come would still be speaking and still be bringing life and still be saying, I was here and God was with me. So we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Woo! Well, guys, share this with other people to inspire them. And we'll see you at the workshop on Saturday. There's always more for you. Don't ever stop believing that there is a place for you to create and to see people get shifted and changed and it's all just within your fingertips literally so we'll see you then simon thank you again for joining